What's up, everyone? What's up, everyone? It's Matt Brozick, and this will be a work in progress series on a quarter scale Rhino prototype. Um, I did a live broadcast earlier just showing up, cleaning up the mold line and stuff on the body and the leg on my uh, Facebook page. But I'm going to do the rest of the YouTube videos because I got to glue, wait for glue to dry, and stuff like that. And so it's easier for me just to do that. And, um, Kind of do videos so anyway um this is the quarter scale rhino sculpted by uh troy mcdivitt um a larger version of the smaller one he did years ago um i believe that one is one scale um uh, i've done two of those in the past for clients it's, it's a fantastic sculpt probably one of the best rhinos out there in my opinion and um for years people have been asking him wanting to have a larger version of it Collectors more than anyone, not necessarily kit builders, but collectors, because most collectors collect uh, quarter scale uh, stuff. So um, I actually reached out to Troy years ago about doing it. I couldn't, have, I couldn't afford the sculpt. I think at that time the sculpt was roughly, I don't know, six thousand dollars or something like that. You know, not not bad, or or maybe it was less than that. I can't remember how much it was. It was expensive for what I could afford to do. So um, luckily one of my clients, uh, Tony, uh, Tony Baker, who I've done a ton of stuff for, uh, started this process last year and commissioned Troy to uh, do this in quarter scale. So I'm gonna show this to you guys uh, put together. I'm gonna go over some of the issues with the kit and, uh, and some corrections. Um, that I've got to make based on what I said yesterday because uh, the um, the caster reached out to me after he kind of watched my live broadcast with some corrections and stuff. So it's a really cool kit. Obviously, it's quarter scale. He's a big boy. This is not an exact uh, duplication of the smaller one. The pose is slightly different. Uh, mainly his arms are in a different position. Um, you get more uh, cinder blocks with it. So I'm going to put them together. He's, he's big. I'm going to be able to fit them all on camera. Um, but this is a traditionally sculpted clay sculpture that's been cut up, molded, and casted. So, and we got all these loose blocks, you can just kind of pull wherever you want. So, there are some fitting issues, and there's, uh, and there's, uh, and there, I'll tell you the reasons because of that. So, here he is, uh, put together. Uh, let me get, uh, get that out of the way. Really, really fantastic sculpt. Troy killed this one. Uh, again, I'm going to do the, just kind of go back over my measurements and stuff. So height wise, he's right at 22 and three quarters tall. He is about 15 inches wide and about, oh, 13 inches deep, somewhere in there. So great piece, fantastic sculpt. Um, yeah, really cool. So yesterday, uh, or not yesterday, sorry, I forgot what day it is. Um, I did a live, I was doing a live broadcast showing up the cleanup of the uh, mold line on the body and the legs. Um, I had to take a break because I had to go buy supplies. I was out of brass tubing or brass rod. They didn't have quarter inch, so I bought 5 16 This is pretty thick, but I want something really solid for the legs. The arms I'm not too worried about having something this thick in there, but for the legs I want something really sturdy. So I got that. I bought some more epoxy. Um, so. My first correction is that I thought that the molder and caster cut the sculpt once he received it. That's not the case. Troy cut this up, um, added the keys, and then shipped it to the, the, the molder and caster. Now what Troy did, and this is my guess of why nothing really fits now. Well, he fits together pretty good. He just doesn't fit on the base. I think it's because uh, the molder and caster told me that Troy used wooden dowels for the keys and stuff. And my guess is that wood um, absorbs some of the moisture from the clay and shift it and stuff. So he actually fits together pretty good. <clears throat> you know, it's your usual seam work you gotta do because you gotta piece them together and fix the seams and stuff, which is no big deal. Um, but where it comes down to is really his feet on the base. So if you look here, really big gaps. Um, I'm gonna outline this around here because it's sitting on top of this. I'm gonna outline this, I'm gonna do some uh, carving and stuff, but I'll have to re-sculpt around the feet to get that to look better. Um, and then also, um, so if I take him apart, let's say if I take him off the base, and the cinder blocks will need some re-keying also. Um, 
get those to stay. But if I take him apart and I put the feet in, they fit. Like this foot will fit by itself. Like that there's nothing else in there. This foot will fit. Yeah, this one doesn't really fit by itself. So anyway, there's some something happened in the keying process where things started to move around. So it is what it is. It's part of the kit building process. It's you know model making. Uh, this is what if this was being produced in China, the guys in the factory would be doing exactly what I'm doing now. They would get everything to fit and everything like that before they primed it and send it out or painted it. So that's what we gotta do. So the first thing I gotta do today, not today, god dang it, <laughs> is is I've got to um I've got to um pin and glue the legs. Okay? So I'm gonna do one leg at a time. I'm gonna cut this brass rod down probably I'll probably do like I don't know five or six inches um, on each side of the leg it doesn't have to go crazy up into the thing but I think if I do like a five inch um, rod that'll give me plenty of support and it's gonna be epoxy and, and epoxy too so we'll have plenty of support in there I do that and so I'm just gonna mark five inches off and um, yeah, so I went to the hobby store and $60 later between buying a $16 piece of brass, uh, $16 in magnets, and $20 in epoxy, <laughs> I've got the supplies to do this guy. So um, I'm going to see if I can cut this with my, I don't think, I'll, have, I'll probably use the Dremel to do this. Yeah, I don't have, these aren't going to be strong enough. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to get my Dremel, I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, so my sorry, my tools aren't all here. We're in the middle of an, <laughs> a home renovation project, so I'm gonna, cut, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these pieces off. <laughs> the heat travels up the um, the brass rod. So I'm going to show one leg on camera, and then I'll do the other one off because it's going to be the same process. So I got this huge ass five sixteenth inch brass rod. I'm going to go ahead and drill a larger hole in the leg. So let's do it. Let's drill a five sixteenth inch a hole in this leg for the rod. boy and now um, so this guy's hollow casted so I'm just gonna kind of I'm gonna we'll, we'll mark center and so the pinning on this um, I'll have a little wiggle room uh, for pinning so the way I'm doing this so depending on how I'm pinning will also lots of times it de will uh, will determine the, the method I use for this guy he's got a little play in the keys so I don't have to be a hundred a hundred percent accurate but I'm gonna um, just mark center on this end and I'll do it on the other side too so I don't have to do it with the leg attached Get it 
relatively close to center. The arms will uh, be easily attached. I'll add a smaller pin to those and glue those. I probably won't show that. I'll just show you one pinning process because it's the same for all, all, for all the limbs. Okay, there. Uh, so let's, let's do this. Let's go ahead and do what I normally do. So what I like normally do is, is I'll take this, I'll drill just a kind of a small hole on the male side. And I've shown this in all my a ton of other videos. And we'll do that for one eighth inch. Um, one eighth inch a little bit. Try to get it as center as possible. It's like big, this guy's big. It's me, uh, me a little cumbersome to handle. Okay, now what we do is we take some blue tack, which I never have readily available, apparently. Oh, there's this back there. I keep a ball of it. <laughs> the ball of my blue tack continues to move around. Okay, let me take some blue tack. And we're gonna, I'm not sure if the male key touches the bottom of the female key. It looks like it's about the right length. And I put it down in the female end. And I put this together. Give it a squeeze and see if it touches. Nope. So the male key doesn't reach the bottom of the female key. So I put some more blue tack in there. And this gets me a relatively and a, a relative idea of where that holes that key's got to go. Okay, so now I push it down. You can see in there. I get some light. You can see a little tab of blue tack sticking up. It tells me where I got to put that hole. And the thing when you're using brass this big, it's really not about the size of the hole. It's the angle. It's really the angle. Of that hole, so that's where you kind of have to that's where you gotta have some play because this brass this brass will not bend <laughs> when you use a smaller brass it will bend and you can kind of Okay, so this is this has got some nice resin to it. It's got it's 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 not thin, which is nice. Which means I'll have some I'll have some meat. Now I'm taking my five five sixteenths, and I'll probably have to drill the hole bigger on the female key just so I have some wiggle room. Solid? I don't know, man. <laughs> if it's not solid, it's got a thick wall. All right. So I drilled that hole. This will fit in. I'm going to make these a little bit bigger, like one size bigger, so I've got some room to play for this pin because it's, it's 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 a big boy. We're gonna epoxy it anyway, so this is really good resin too. It's very nice to work with. There it went through. But that key, this key is solid, which is nice. Which means I got a lot of good meat to um, work with. 
So I can go up in there. So yeah, I'm gonna probably drill the hole in the leg. Well, I probably, this pin's probably way too long for what I need. I could probably cut this in half. I might do that. All right, not stuck. Not stuck. I need my pliers. Yeah, I could probably get away with. That's a five inch um, piece of brass. I'd like it to go up into the mail key all the way. So I may cut this in half. I think two and a half may be long enough. So let's see, where's my tape measure and put it away. I really want the key to go up past the, the this part in the body. So I want to go up there. So how, how long is that? So that's an inch and a quarter. So I do an inch and a quarter. So maybe I make these Instead of five inches, I make them like three inches and then go an inch and a half up into there. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this down again. I don't think I need a five inch key. I think it's a little overkill. Or five inch out broad. Because to be honest, once, the, once this brass rod's up into the hollow body, all the strength of this brass rod is right here. It does nothing up here because this is um, hollow. So I'm going to cut this again. Cut the hole of the pliers so I don't burn my fingers because it's going to get hot really quick. I could try to do uh, this with uh, casting resin. If you ever watch uh, Raphael uh, Robledo, he does this kind of thing with casting resin. So pour like two part casting resin in this key, he'll throw that and sho shove it together and let that cure. Um, I've never tried that before. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that would be plenty strong enough for what we're doing. Um, but and I just, this is how I've always join parts like this, so I just kind of stick with it. Ooh, that's hot. Hot, 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 hot. hot metal. Okay, so I do need to make these holes a little bit bigger because it's a tight fit. I think part of it is that that metal kind of I think the brass expands a little bit as you cut it, and um, so I'm going to mark the center of this just so I, I know I've got enough meat going into each side of the key. I'm going to mark an inch and a half. So I'm going to insert this. So this is going to go past the male key all the way up into the body a little bit. And this should give me enough meat into the leg to give me a nice solid joint. So I'm going to glue this into place, I think. And then I'll adjust the hole in here bigger as I need to get it to fit. So let's do that. So I'm gonna mix up a little, a little epoxy and I'll probably pause while that cures for a little bit. I'm gonna use, my, use up the epoxy I do have, which my family hates the smell of, but it's too bad, it is what it is. I like to scuff up the brass, just so it's got a little more 
um, texture for the epoxy that I hold on to. So by the end of the day, I hope to have this all this all pinned together, um, and then I don't know. If, man, if I put in a good day, I, I might be able to get them kind of like keyed and puttied up. So I'd like to start painting at some point tomorrow. So we'll see. I thought I'd maybe have two days of prep on this, but maybe I can get it done in like a day, day and a half. We'll see. Again, the hardest part, the part that's going to take the longest is working on getting the feet to fit in the base, I think. And that's just kind of some grinding and putty work. And I'm going to um, use that easy sculpt I've been using. Because uh, I ran out of Aves a while ago. And uh, it's kind of, it's expensive for what it is. For how, for how often I use Aves, I don't use Aves a ton. And it tends to dry out on me because it... it I mix up too much epoxy. I don't tend to mix too much epoxy, but I'd rather have too much mixed up than not enough. Anyway, uh, every time I bought Aves like in a big tub, it dries out by the time I get done get to it. So, because every time you open the tub, it introduces air into the Aves and it, it dries out over time. So, um, I've had to throw away quite a bit of it in the past, and I, I was buying the smaller tubs. And I don't know this easy sculpt. I can get it locally, um, and for the amount I get, I get twice as much of it for the same price as the Aves. And I've actually been using a lot of it lately, so. Um, and the only difference between it and the Aves is that when you're working, with it feels like it has like a little bit of a sandy texture to it. But it's interesting because once it kind of cures, it's it's smooth. It's, it's kind of an interesting product. Okay, so we're gonna coat this brass and this epoxy. A lot of it's gonna ooze out, it's fine. Go right up to my mark. Get the excess. I'm going to pause and let this sit, and we'll come back. Okay, so while this is drying, I'm going ahead and drilling out the hole on the other side and getting the key cut and get that inserted. And might as well do that while it's drying, and then that way I can kind of work at these legs at the same time. Okay, so while that epoxy is drying, I glued the other pin. And what I'm doing is I'm going in here on the legs. And I'm using the 5 16 inch uh, drill bit, but I'm going and I'm kind of wallowing it out. So I got some play um, for those keys. Because what I'll do is, if these, I don't care if these holes are bigger, because I'm going to fill these holes with epoxy. And when I put these, uh, when I connect everything, the epoxy should ooze out of this hole, fill this key, and hopefully, and uh, glue everything together nice and tight, or nice and firm. So uh, we should have a really good joint here. By the time we're done. So I was gonna do these individually, but I think it's better if I try to do them at the same time, that way I can get them on the base and kind of uh, epoxy it and kind of get them in the right position. Okay, so I know I gotta work on this hole. It's gonna to be quite a bit bigger actually. Because again, these, rod, these rods don't bend at all, so there's no <laughs> room for them to. I'm gonna go here and drill up. Let's go in with the um, three eighths. So if I was using like um, a three thirty second inch rod or something, they would, I could actually bend them to where I want. But but since this doesn't bend, we gotta. Make these holes big enough so there's enough play in there that the, this will slide in. All right, so I'm gonna work on getting those to fit and then we'll come back. Okay, so I'm test fitting these and this leg goes on, no problem. I got a big hole in the female end and the brass fits in there perfectly and the leg goes on really easily. So uh, I've got 
some plenty of work to do here, obviously. This one, I think I got a little glue on the on the on the key, so it's not wanting to go down. So I'm having to, there's plenty of room in there. The hole's big enough for the brass. So I'm having to clean up this key a little bit because not wanting to go down. You can hear that squeaking. That's the it's resin on resin. So I got to clean that up a little bit, and then it should slide together. So I don't know what I did, but this key does not fit in here anymore. <laughs> so the only thing I think of is. Um, like it expanded or something from drilling the hole, but this one didn't do it. So I'm having to get this to fit again. I'm not sure what I did. If it, it slid in there perfectly last time, I'm not, the brass is not touching anywhere. So it's not the brass causing it, but it's not winding. It doesn't go in. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. Like it fit perfectly, but I can only go to get to go in that far. So I got to work on getting this key to fit now. Okay. Finally got it to fit. <laughs> so I don't know what I did, but the key wasn't fitting. Um, after I, well, actually it's not fitting. I got to, work on that yeah so maybe the brass is interfering a little bit so i gotta work on this uh hole in the female and so i'm gonna keep doing that okay so i finally figured out what's going on so it was the brass so if you look at the key the brass this key's kicking forward a little bit so it had to make the hole bigger and now it fits in there fine so it's fine so i got a big hole but i'll just fill the hole with epoxy and we'll put them on the base and do that so let's do that real quick clean up my mess I love kit building. It's such a fun process. <laughs> so sometimes it doesn't go the way you want it to. Look at the bottom. This is covered in mold. At least I can feel it. All right. So we're going to just do one leg, leg at a time. Um, but we're going to do this. We're going to get this out of here. We're going to mix up another nice batch of epoxy. Oh, I'm also going to... I like to do this when I'm doing uh, joints like this. Um... I got, I'm going to go ahead and use these small pieces of brass for the arms. It's overkill, but I don't want to waste them since that's the brass is expensive. That one rod was $16. So, I've had a, it's, so whenever I post a, a finished piece, a finished piece like the Superman I just finished, I always get, I, it's, I know I'm going to get a bunch of people asking me about billing form and stuff. And I quote them prices. And out of 10 people who contact me at you know one or two projects may come out of that because they realize <laughs> how expensive it is and I'm, I think I may be one of the more expensive guys out there but um, you know because I charge the way I charge but um, you have to consider how much the supplies are <laughs> so you know just in this one guy I'll have $50 in supplies and brass magnets and, and glue and then that doesn't include the paint so yeah, so we gotta take that into consideration. All right, so what I like to do is, I like to take, I like to just drill some shallow holes in the, just kind of randomly. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna not only fill the, my goal is to have a, quite a bit of, And this will just give, just like that. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill, I'm gonna fill this hole that I drilled out with epoxy. And then I'm going to um, brush on epoxy on the joint on both sides. And I'll give me a really good strong bond. Got a bunch of dust in there from the drilling process. Okay, so he fits good. I'll try to back up here a little bit so you can see. It's a challenge of working something this big as getting it all on camera. Since I'm using my phone, I can't zoom out. Just like kind of adding some little keys in there for the epoxy to get into and um, straw it's probably a little overkill but I'm gonna give this a little scuff I haven't washed the parts so there may be a little bit of mold release on here so just scuff it up a little bit 
I'll wash them once he's all together because I gotta do all the putty work and all that stuff. This is real light scuff. And then to give it some tooth. Nothing crazy. Okay. Uh, this. Yeah, we're gonna mix up a nice. Oh, wait, I mean, it's, uh, it's not my new one. I'm actually gonna use my new epoxy. I don't know if I have enough of this. I'm gonna keep the upside down to let it drain. We'll use this stuff. This stuff doesn't, sm I don't mind the smell of the, epo the epoxy. I kind of like it, my family hates it. So we'll use this uh, stuff I bought yesterday. Epoxy is expensive. This little five minute set kit was $25. <laughs> it's not cheap. And I go through it pretty quick. I forgot there's a plug in here. I'm take the plug out. Should have some alcohol on here, but I don't. I'll just use the lacquer thinner to clean it up. This can be a long video because we're gonna do all the prep in one video, so it'll be a couple hours probably. So for those few guys that like to watch <laughs> me work and screw up, follow along. So maybe do this uh, whole thing in two videos. We'll do the prep in one and paint in the other. Come on. Can't get the play out. What the heck? What the heck? I'll be back in a second. Okay, I couldn't get the plug out, it's weird. Okay, so we're gonna mix up a good amount of this. This is a one-to-one, -one, so we're gonna do... And the more you mix up, the faster it kicks off, so you kinda of have to be quick. says five minute but that's working time and it's a thermo exit or anyway as it heats up it kicks off faster Shitty brush. I'm kind of out of shitty brushes, so these are my old paint brushes that I don't really use anymore. some epoxy in these little shallow holes I drilled. I 
that. I'm gonna be off camera here for a second because this is gonna start to go here in a minute and I gotta get the leg on. So just coat everything. Okay, put that to the side. Now, put it together. Okay, so I got epoxy in that hole. I filled that hole all the way up and the brass rod is in the hole. So I'm gonna put them on the base just so that leg's in the right position. Actually, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna hold them here because I rather have, I wanna make sure that this is in the right position here. Cause I'm gonna adjust the base. So everything's lined up pretty good here. So I'm just gonna hold this. I don't have clamps big enough to, to clamp it. So I'm just gonna have to hold this here for, I don't know, 10 minutes or so while this kicks off. But if I put them on the base and this gap kinda of, kind of opens up a little bit, bit and it's more, for me it's more important to have this cleaner and then work on the base a little bit more. So I'm just gonna hold this till it kicks off. All right, so I went ahead and epoxied this leg in. I'm holding this one upside down, uh, just so I can, I, I, I didn't quite mix up enough epoxy enough, and I wanna kinda have it come out of the female key and run down that, that uh, brass pin. And, um, cause it started to kick off by the time I put it on. And um, so this leg's got a little more gap work to do, right there you can see. But this is how it fits on. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the legs fit on, so those it fits the body as good as possible. And then once I get this figured out, then I'll adjust the base because I think once the legs are on, I can basically rekey the base. I can wallow out the the male or the female keys in the base, make this really big, and do my normal kind of rekeying process. Because when I put the legs on the body the way they want to go. Uh, the legs are a little closer together than what the keys are on the base. So if I try to, like this leg was kicked off, I try to glue it on with this on the base, but then his feet splayed out too much. So the keys in the base don't match up with the keys on the foot once the legs are on the body in the correct position, <laughs> if that makes sense. So once this kicks off, uh, here in about 10, 15 minutes, um, then I'll be able to uh, work on getting the him to fit on the base better. I'm not gonna worry about putting the arms on yet uh, until I get the, um, kind of get him fitting on the base, but that's where we are. So I'm just holding this in the place uh, till this dries enough to where it doesn't move. So I'm just kind of looking this at, looking at this as this cures him. And it's interesting, so like this leg right here, his uh, right leg, when Troy cut this, it was a real clean cut. Like it fits pretty, pretty good. There's not much putty work to do here. But I'm looking at this when he cut this one, it's a little sloppier. I can actually see where the clay moved uh, in here. So this, this when he cut this, the clay got pushed. Um, so that's why there's a big gap there. Same over here. When this got cut, the clay actually moved. Um, so love Troy's a sculptor, he's amazing. Uh, but I think he could have gone back after he cut this and kind of smushed it kind of smushed the clay back into position so it's a little better fit. Like I said, this leg fits pretty, pretty, pretty good. I mean, there's a little bit of seam work. I'll do a little sanding in this. I'll probably grind this down a little bit uh, and then I'll have to putty it and do some sculpting. But this leg, um, I don't know, when he used the wire to cut it, just something slipped and that's why we have all these gaps. Um, so yeah, I could have done a better job of cutting this leg. Um, so this is, it's not fully kicked off. I can, it's still pliable just a little bit. But when I go to put them back on the base, if I try to, like, if I put this foot in the key, this doesn't fit at all. If I try to put this foot in the key, it doesn't fit at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just, I'm gonna take these two keys in the base, and I'm just gonna make these really big, just really big holes, and then we'll put them down and see how he fits in these openings. I'm hoping that if I make these holes really big, that his feet will fit in these outlines better, and then I can just putty these keys and have it fit better. So um, that's gonna, I'm gonna let that continue to dry. So for this, um, what's the best way to do that? 
like a drill bit. I can't use a drill bit because the hole's too big. So I'm gonna have to grind it out. So I think I'm just gonna use my Dremel. So I'm gonna use a Dremel with this with this um, grinding bit on it. And I'm just gonna get, it's gonna be loud. So I'm gonna just do it off camera, but I'm gonna do this with the um, vacuum and just drill these holes out really, really big and just make them really oversized and hopefully he'll fit down in there and fit the opening. Then we'll rekey the, uh, re uh, we'll rekey those with putty. Okay, so that did the trick. So you can see I made these quite a bit bigger than what they were before. Uh, but now when I go put him in the base, he actually kind of fits. So what I'm going to do, um, so now I'm still going to do uh, putty work on these because he's a little wobbly. So we're going to stabilize him because again, I lined up, I want to make sure these legs are lined up so they fit the body. That was more important to me than it fitting the base because I can work on that a little bit easier. So now what I'm going to do, I think I'll just do this with Bondo because um, it's just a little quicker than putty. But it looks like this leg could have been, it almost looks like the legs need to twist a little bit, but they're lining up on the body just fine. So, but yeah, so I need to um, putty these. Should I do Bondo or should I just do the um, easy sculpt? Maybe I'll do easy sculpt because it's just a stronger, um, it's a stronger putty. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, but they go in the keys now. And, um, but you can see down here that this, because I drilled that out, when I put this together before I glued anything, this foot was way over here. I was like sitting on top here, but now that it's aligned with the body, it's sitting on there correctly. So um, now what I can do is I can do the easy sculpt, the Vaseline on the feet and put them in there and then work on sculpting around the base. So I'm gonna clean up my workbench a little bit because it's really, really, actually, you know what I could do? Let's go ahead and put the arms on since we're kind of in that mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the arms on. It's gonna be the same process, the legs, we drill holes, add keys, glue them on, but that way I can kind of clean up all my dusty stuff and then work with the putty. So uh, when I'm done with putting the arms on, we'll come back and work on getting the, uh, the, the, the feet and everything sculpted to the base. Okay, so I got the pins in the arms. While those are drying, I'm gonna, I was gonna put magnets in these bricks, um, but the key isn't big enough to put the size magnet I bought. And it, it's actually a pretty good fit. Like it's pretty stable. So I'm gonna just add a pin to it. So uh, whenever uh, there's a ship that can pin in, it won't fall over. So I just drilled a 5 32nd inch hole in the bottom and it went all the way through because it's a pretty thin part of the base. So now I'm gonna do, is instead of doing my silly my uh, blue tack method, I'm going to put this on the I'm going to put this on the base, and I'm going to go back up through the bottom of the base into that key. I just got to hold it still, and then that way the pin lines up perfectly. Let's see how that turned out. And so now the pin is right there. And that'll line up perfectly into the base. So I can glue this in and it should peg right in and line up. And then by the time I putty this and kind of rekey that, it'll be a good fit. Is this epoxy still good? Yeah, I have some epoxy mixed up over here from the arm, so it still hasn't kicked off yet because it's not that much. So I'm gonna go throw that in here. It's starting to kick off, so I have to use a little bit of it. Clean up the excess. Yeah, it's just kicked off, so. Just like that. And then, uh, where's my, let's see, it doesn't have to be that long, I don't think. We're gonna, I'll make it a little longer than it has to be, just to be sure. And then since I use that tool to cut it, I always like to go back with um, a file or some sanding paper and just round off the key. And since it's a brass, it sands really easily. So I'm just using some 180 grit sandpaper here. I'm just gonna round it off so it, nothing can catch on the... Okay, so we rounded that off. Now 
now pegs in perfectly and it's not gonna fall out. And by the time I reputty this and fill up all those gaps, it's gonna be a good fit. I'll do the same thing to this one and then those are uh, pegged and ready to be rekeyed. Pretty simple on that. Okay, continuing on. Um, so we got them all put together. Or I got them all put together. You guys didn't do anything. <laughs> uh, legs are glued and pinned. Arms are glued and pinned. Um, those look good. So minimal putty work on the arms. Those are cut really good. So now I'm going to work on uh, getting the feet on the base better. Um, and I'm going to use this Easy Sculpt again. So like I said, this is a two-part epoxy. It's very similar to Aves. Mix it one to one ratios. Um, get my gloves. Hold on, I better get um, my Vaseline. One second. Okay, sorry. All right, so we're gonna mix some of this up. Oh, I gotta blow my nose. I'm gonna pause. All right, sorry. <laughs> I honk my horn when I blow my nose. It's very loud. Uh, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take him. I'm just going to focus on the bottom of the base here. Take them off. I'm going to um, put Vaseline all over his feet. Bottom on the keys. And this is just, this easy sculpt is very, very sticky. That's one reason kind of, I kind of like it. Um, and it, it kicks off quicker than the Aves. So I can put this on there and um, Aves is a 24 hour full cure. This is an eight hour full cure, but really after about three hours on this stuff, it's, you can't do anything with it. You could probably carve it a little bit maybe, but again, I'm not a sculptor, so I don't ever do that with it. So I'm gonna get this stuff all up on the edges here. Again, I don't care if this is messy because this is, yeah, we'll get a really good bath before we do any painting. So I just wanna make sure that I got a good coat of acid on his feet. So when I put him down, I can let it sit there for maybe, um, I'll let it sit for, oh, 30, 40 minutes. And that's when it starts to kind of start to get a little, um, this putty will start to solidify a little bit to the point where I could pull the feet off or pull them off the base. That's pretty good. But I'm basically gonna fill these voids where his feet go with this putty. I'm gonna smush them on there. some nice outlines for his feet and keys. And this is all part of building the traditional garage kit. None of this fancy 3D stuff from China. This is old school garage kit stuff, which is it's kind of fun because it's a nice change of pace to do this kind of stuff because although sometimes on the 3D stuff I get from China, there's a little bit of this this is just a lot more problem solving, getting things to fit, and so it's, you know, it's challenging, it's fun. Just changes it up a little bit. There's a little more building involved in the process. And then when you're done, it's kind of more satisfying. It's like, oh, I put all that work into it, it looks amazing. Okay, put that to the side. And then I put gloves on, because again, I don't get this all, it's like really sticky. There's a part A and part B. Now. They are very similar in color, almost damn near the same color. And then I always make sure that I don't mix up the lids. That's so part A, and I've got my lids labeled and everything. I've been doing a lot of this lately. So part A, and I don't use the same, so I don't use the same hand to pull out the putty. So I'll use my right hand to pull out the part A and my left hand to pull out the part B because you don't want to contaminate, cross contaminate.
This is a little harder to get out of the can, but than Abe's is, but I, I still like it. I guess where it kind of has a sandy texture, but when it dries, it's kind of it's pretty smooth. Okay, I'm gonna start off with a ball about that big for the A. Okay. Come in here and get some of the B. The B seems to be a little stiffer. It's harder to get out. And that's once you mix it, it uh, gets pretty pliable. I just eyeball it as far as um, you can weigh it if you want it, but I don't I just eyeball it. Same thing when I do A, I just eyeball it. One to one ratio. Okay, I can go ahead and use my right hand to make a ball. I'm not going to go back in and pull out of the A can. That's pretty close. Okay, that looks pretty good. Quite a bit of putty. This should be enough for both feet. We'll see. And again, I don't care what it looks like underneath his feet when this is all said and done. I just want him to fit on the baseball and be solid. So the way I like to mix this stuff, I fold it and I like to roll it out like this and fold. Now when you do A's, it says let it sit for five minutes. This, there's actually no instructions on this. It says one to one by volume. Cure time, eight hours. Um, and for smoothing out, you just use water on this stuff. A's, you can use Solvacet or alcohol. This, you just use water. Water soluble. enough for both of them. Let's see. I like to have a little extra that way. I want to mix it more in the middle of what I'm doing. But yeah, I just like to really mix it really thoroughly. Again, they're the same color, so you can't tell. A lot of two-part epoxies come in like yellow and white, and so when you mix it, you can tell if you have it mixed well because it'll be a consistent color. When it's the same color, it's hard to tell. So, better just to make sure it's thoroughly mixed. Okay, so now, I know I gotta fill these keys in a little bit because I walled them out. I'm gonna do that. I gotta fill it around the edges. I'm gonna need to be neat about it. I'm just gonna shove it in there. And we're gonna just put them on the base and push them down. And to be honest, the sculpted key isn't very accurate anyway, so. up a little bit more. You're gonna have a little extra and have it ooze out. I'm 
Yeah, I don't care what it looks like under his feet once he's off the base. We just want to make sure that when he's put together, it looks good. So let's go do that. Okay, I'm going to take my gloves off because I don't want to get this all over the body. And I don't have to work quickly. I can take my time on this. So I'm standing up, I'm giving a good squeeze. Okay. So I had a lot of ooze out on this side, but I could take some of this from over here. And bring it over here where I still got some gaps I don't like. And like I said, I'm gonna let this sit for Oh, I don't know. 30, 40 minutes. The last time I did this, I waited like an, uh, about an hour and a half, and I almost <laughs> epoxy the two parts together that I was doing this too. It's like, okay, so I know I gotta, I can't let it sit as long as um, the A's. Like, A's, I can let it usually sit for quite a bit, and then I, I can pull it apart. But this stuff, since it's got a quicker uh, cure time, I can't do that. sculpting tools here. We're going to come in here and just kind of make sure I don't fill any of the details in. And I may have to do this twice. We'll see. Um, I guess I'm going to sit this, let this sit for a while and I'll pull them out and I'll look at the, 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 the female square keys where I drilled it out so it'll fit. And if uh, those aren't filled in enough then we'll do those areas again. But this will give me a good outline for the feet. Hopefully I'm in, I'm in the camera. I'm just kind of going in here and shaping it. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the bricks over here. I won't show them on camera because it's the same process. I just wanted, I just wanted a tighter fit on the base, so. But um, getting him to fit is the more important part. So I'm just getting it up to the edge of the foot right now. I'm not worried about kind of putting any texture in it. To replicate the stuff around it, the whatever this is, rocks or gravel. So here, where it came up between his toes, it's got Vaseline all over it. I won't reuse that part of the putty. It's got Vaseline all over it, so I'll just clean that out with a Q-tip. Got some water going here. Some water and a Q-tip. That is much better looking right there. Make for a nice uh, key. And he's not going to wobble at all. Cast reached out to me yesterday. He's like, hey, you can go in there and add some uh, ballast and stuff for like railroads and stuff. I could do, if, that was my, if this was my personal piece, I would do that, but that wouldn't be representative of what uh, people would be getting. So um, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> unless, <clears throat> unless the Tony, the producer, decides to do that. Um, but yeah, if it's my personal piece, I'd go in there and add all sorts of ballast and stuff and really. 
but since this is going to be, we want to make sure we represent what people are going to get. Okay, so I'm going to clean out these cracks a little bit. Actually getting a second one of these it should be here tomorrow and I'm just gonna prep that one I'm not gonna paint it um, because I think uh, Tony's gonna offer a, a, a kit version that's prepped so if he does that then all this stuff I'm doing right now will be done for whoever purchases the kit already the key the fitting all that stuff the gluing together and then if they decide they want to go in there and detail this area a little bit more, they can as a, as a kit builder. But the idea is they get a piece that's kind of like what you would get if you were in a custom group ordering from China, only on the factory. <laughs> so this is kind of a test bed to see how this one and the second one is kind of a test bed. So how long does it take me to prep one and what's that cost? Um, I'm thinking it's about a day and a half of work so far to do the prep. That's kind of my estimate. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And once I take them out, if there's any like uh, little cleanups on the edge, I can do that. Right now I just want to make sure this gap is filled. And then when you take them off and put them on, he's, he's solid and doesn't wobble. Okay, so that's like, that side's looking pretty good. Let's come over here and work on this side. I'll come down a little bit closer. <clears throat> Again, I'm just gonna kind of take this putty and work it up into the gaps. And it doesn't have to, again, it doesn't have to match the other side perfectly. We just want to make sure that when there's no, like, thing that's sticking out, like, oh, looks like it doesn't fit. Like I said, I may do this a second time. We'll see. What's that? Um, I'll take a little break to clean up again. Every few hours I take a break and kind of clean up my work area because I just have to. Otherwise it just gets out of hand. Reach that. And then I got to clean up my floor. My floor is covered in dust and stuff from yesterday working on keying and drilling holes. So. You can see here I'm just kind of sculpting right up to the edge of the foot. Kind of getting it underneath it just a little bit. We've got any excess, just kind of take it off. It's in a crack. Clean it out. Just kind of continue the shape of that rock right there. So now when I do the second one, I know what I'm, I know the process of how, how I'm going to put this together. So it might go a little quicker. We'll see. But I will prep that other one before I paint, starting to paint on this one. That way, I, just my work area is out of the prep mode. So I don't want to be in the middle of painting and creating a bunch of dust and stuff from drilling and sanding. piece of the base may have cracked off right there because I'm trying to move something and a lot of the putty's moving so that tells me there's a piece of the base that cracked off underneath it. It's okay. I can't see it. I thought this crack continued on here but it really doesn't.
Yeah, so the before I did this, there was no texture sculpted around the foot where he sat into the in this base. It's, 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 it's weird. The key's weird. Um, there's a big gap, and there was no rock texture sculpted into it, so I'm not sure why. So, hold on. First, I'm going to smooth it out and get it around his foot the way I want. And then I'll probably go in there and I'll just add a little texture to it. I'll probably use up some ball, some balled up um, tin foil that works really good for just kind of adding some texture to it. So here I got quite a lot of excess putty, but it's keying this heel really good. So I'm going to leave it in there and I'm going to kind of make like another rock right here. shape my rudimentary sculpting skills so as this work as I work this I can feel it getting a little stiffer so already it's starting to stiffen up this is actually when it's really sculptable at this point off. I'm going to put that on the back side. A little bit of gap. Actually, that's pretty good. Okay. Let's not use it. I'm just trying to get this to blend a little bit with the surrounding areas. Back here you really can't see it because it's really deep behind this rock right here in the base. I'm not too concerned about that as much. Yeah, I just, it was either just to do a YouTube video on this or rather try to do live broadcasts because there's some waiting between, for glue to dry and stuff. And so I switched over to YouTube. But yesterday I did the live broadcast on um, the initial um, cleanup and pinning and all that stuff. Today we're sculpting and getting the final prep done on this piece. We'll see if I can get 
everything ready for paint to bar. Maybe it may be two full days, we'll see. Anyway, so we're gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna get some, uh, I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit. And while this is drying, I can work on doing the joints on the arms and stuff. Cause I need them, I'm gonna keep, keep them on the base while I work on that. It's easier than me trying to put them in my lap and work on them. So, we'll do a little bit of that on the camera. And so I'll just do one arm here. And it's gonna be the same process for the legs and everything. It's just puttying and sculpting and all that fun stuff. So that's gonna take me several hours to get that all done. Putty looking the way I want. And then um, I can prime over this putty. Um, you know, I usually wait four to five hours to, before I prime on it. It doesn't have to be completely 100% eight hour cure. Uh, but if I get some primer on this tonight, that'd be amazing. Or primer on it today at some point, we'll see. Okay, we're gonna mix up a little bit of this easy sculpt. I'm already at an hour and 15 on this video, so. Don't need a lot for the arm. Let's do them both at the same time, I think. Because the arms fit actually pretty good. Up. The legs off to work on in my lap because I can't get underneath this crotch while it's on the base. So, but the arms I can do while it's on the base, I think. So my thinking on the on the um, area around his feet is just add a little texture to the putty is I'll let that, while I'm working on the arms and stuff, well, by the time I'm kind of working on the arms, it's been an hour or so. And I can take them off the base. Um, and then that putty will stay on the base and won't move. And I can add a little texture to it so it blends a little bit better. So I'm just gonna work on one arm here on camera a little bit. Switch to I'll just leave one hand. So right now I don't care about covering up detail. We're gonna get the we're gonna get the gap filled. It's messy at first. We'll clean it up here in a minute.
some kind of pushing on it to get to go down into that seam. I don't need put I don't need putty on this side on the on this side because that's the way this is um fits is that this overlaps that side a little bit. Okay, now I can go in here with uh, this tool. And just kind of follow what's in the sculpt already and just kind of I think you get the gist of it. It's kind of putty, sculpt, putty, sculpt. Trying to match the texture and the sculpt that's here. Troy, so I'm just trying to So that's the gist of it. Putty, sculpt, putty, sculpt. Uh, so I'll come back when I get these done and hopefully I can take them off the base here in a little while. Okay, so I did the arms, those are over there drying and I was able to take them off the base. And this we got, so pretty good. Um, it filled in that void pretty nicely. So now I'm gonna come in here and clean this up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna get, and this is just to the point where I can um, I don't want to mess up the edges too much because that looks really good. I meant to put them back on the base. Uh, actually, I meant to go get some um, tin foil so I can stamp some texture into this putty. But you can see it's kind of stiffened up pretty good after about, oh, an hour and a half or so. But with about the base, I can go in here and kind of Try to blend this in a little bit better. Let's see, what could I use for? These keys reform really nicely. They're nice and square. They're lined up with his feet now. So now I've got good keys in the base. But you can see how thick this putty is. It's uh, that's how much gap there was in the bottom of his foot. A good eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch. And it looks like he went down all the way. Yeah, the bottom of the key, the keys completely formed. So that's good. I don't want to mess with those because those are the right shape and everything. 
So I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. And then I'm gonna um, do the same thing on the bricks here in a second. And then I can work on doing the legs. Same thing on the arms, just putty, kind of sculpt the texture back in. But this is to the point where I can kind of clean it up a little bit. This is kind of the last chance to get any excess off before it gets too hard. So you work, like, it's like A, so you have different stages of workability and what you want to do with it. So, like, since I'm not a, like a traditional sculptor, to me this is probably like the optimal sculpting stiffness, <laughs> if that's a thing. It's pliable and workable, but it stays where you put it. So I, I don't think I mess with this too much. I, I like the way it fits, and um, again, I don't care what it looks like underneath this foot because you don't see it. I just want to kind of, anywhere that just sticks out to me, like I've got tool marks or something. I just want to clean that up a little bit. So that's kind of it. So I'm just gonna finish cleaning this up. I'm gonna rekey these two uh, the same way I did the feet. And then um, we'll see where we are. Um, I'll be able to work on the legs, the, the, the joints on the legs while this, I do that. Um, this is what I have mixed up from the, the arms. And it's a little too stiff to use here. So I'm not gonna worry about using this because it's a little too, yeah, I think it's just too stiff to ooze out and do what I want to do. So I'm just gonna put that to the side. It's kind of wasted, but it's okay. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna uh, putty, basically the bottom of those bricks, stick them in there, sculpt around them, and get those to fit. And when I come back, hopefully I'll have the uh, the the legs seamed and all this fit in. We'll take a look at it. Okay, so just like the feet, I'm mixing up some putty, putting in the bottom where the, the bricks go, smooshing it down, and cleaning it up. So now, even though I put a pin in them, they're still a little wobbly, so that's why I'm doing this, because they didn't sit, they don't sit flat on the base. So, um, that's why I'm doing this. It doesn't take too long with these guys, pretty quick. So again, I'm gonna do a lot of putting on this guy. So yeah, today's goal is to get all the putty work done, let it dry, get in the bath, and I'll probably throw primer on it late tonight after this putty's dried for a couple hours and check all my putty work. Um, really the only area I may have to check is like on the seams on, on the rhino, make sure that those all blended well. Um, I got a little cleanup, I can see I already got a little cleanup on the arms to do. Because as I mark, as I kind of sculpt the uh, texture in there, it creates little crumbles of the putty, but I just let it dry and I just kind of should be able to brush those off. So again, just kind of filling these voids right here. I'm not putting down any, I'm not putting any down in the key because that key fits pretty good. Just filling this in. And again, after about an hour, um, I'll be able to pull these off. So that gives me time to work on blending the legs. That's probably a little too much, we'll see. I thought I had mixed up enough for both of these um, the first time, but I didn't. Push down and give it a good squeeze. <clears throat> So this is what the putty is doing is going underneath the brick and it's filling that void um, where it doesn't sit down. It's just kind of 
what I'll do is I'll conform to the bot the shape of the bottom of the brick, and then I'll just give it another a little more stability um, as far as it not wobbling around. Because even with the pins in there, they were a little loose. I didn't like that, so we'll just do this again. It's pretty quick on these guys. So that's it. So um, yeah, I'm gonna come back whenever I get done working on the legs and getting those blended. And we'll see what time of day it is because I'll have to let everything dry. Let's put it dry for a while. So like right here, I got a lot of kind of ooze out. I'm just gonna come in here and scoop that out. I don't want it filling in between those rocks too much. So just dig out the excess. And there's a little gap down here, but that's okay. It's supposed to be sitting on top. I just didn't like the way it was wobbling, so. I'm just getting all the excess that kind of oozed up. All right, I'll pretty much do it for that. All right, so we got all this stuff dry. Um, oh no, I gotta work on the uh, legs. And then we gotta let it dry. So um, yeah, that'll take me a little while to get those seamed and kind of blended. So once I feel like I have those in a good spot, I'll come back. Okay, took a little while, but I got the legs puttied and I think those look pretty good. So as you can see, there's like little some little crumblies of uh, putty here. But once this dries enough, I can kind of go and brush those off. That's just from me taking the sculpting tool and going through the through the putty, and it just kind of pulls up some excess. So um, I think that's going to blend nicely. Uh, so I got the arms and the legs blended, um, looking pretty good. So um, yeah, I think we're in good shape here. So again, I'm gonna let this all dry for a little while and then uh, we'll see how it looks. Um, I want I want all this stuff to dry on the body so I can get rid of the crumblies. And then um, after it dries a while, I can wash it and get some primer on it. All right, so the bricks have dried for a little while. See if they, they can take these off without screwing anything up. Pretty good. So I basically just filled up that whole void down there. Uh, this one maybe a little soon. Yeah, that one's a little soon. I got that putty dry a little longer. If the putty hasn't cured long enough, you'll just pull it up. So you gotta get it set up, solidify enough to when you pull it up, that it um, doesn't come up. So anyway, that looks pretty good. Yeah, so we just kind of filled that void and created a flat spot. Without that being flat, they wobbled. So there you go, looking good. Okie dokie, so uh, we got them all ready for primer. So um, everything looks really, looking really good. Putty's just about dry. Um, but I think we're gonna get this guy primed up and I'll call this work in progress done. And the next one will be the paint process. So uh, I won't show priming, I'm just spraying primer, nothing too crazy. But uh, we'll get him in primer tonight and then uh, tomorrow we'll start painting. 
But there you go. Rhino all prepped and ready for primer and paint. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.